I'm going to talk to you today about the uh, national curriculum. Um, so the first slide um, is the background of the national curriculum. Um, so as you can see, um, in every school and college, um, they work at the same, uh, every child works at the same level and has exactly the same opportunities. So in the national curriculum was created so that every school and college works at a similar standard. So that no sort of particular school had better opportunities than, uh, say, another one. So in 2011, Michael Grove, the Education Secretary, asked for a review of the whole national curri uh, curriculum to be reviewed at the standards. Uh, in June 2012, um, the curriculum, the, well, the government uh, published the, its review. Um, so in 2009, Britain was ranked the, tw uh, the 19th in the world for the reading um, and maths for 15-year-olds. So, because every school um, is given each child and young adult exactly the same opportunities, um, this this means that when these people go into the um, into sort of working careers, they've got exactly the same, um, hopefully, same qualifications, or they've got exactly the same amount like, of GCSEs. And also, when they go on from college or um, from sort of A levels, they've got exactly the same sort of um, qualifications which can then lead them on to permanent jobs. So after doing the review in 2012, they went on to change na national curriculum. Um, they changed the key areas um, and trying to improve performance nationally. Um, so this was obviously because um, China was ranked um, a higher uh, standard for reading at the 15-year-olds. Um, so Britain wanted to obviously review it so that they can become at the same standard. So the second PowerPoint, the aims and objectives of the national curriculum. So the national curriculum provides pupils with an introduction to the essential knowledge they need to be educated citizens. So if every school um, and work at the same level, um, this obviously allows um, obviously all all the children to have exactly the same um, opportunities so they get the same exact um, same education so it introduces pupils to be the best that has been thought and said that helps uh, genders and appropriation of human creativity and achievement so this allows obviously all the children to be given um, high education as well uh, leading on to better jobs. So the third PowerPoint, roles and responsibilities of agendas working with the national curriculum. Stan Standards and Testing Agency um, is obviously one of the um, people that work alongside um, with obviously looking at the national curriculum. The Standards and Testing Agency are responsible for the development and delivery of all statutory assessments from early years to the end of key stage three. So obviously having a company that comes up with a test, it's not biased and every test is then given out to obviously all the different schools, given each child exactly the same opportunity. Um, so certain schools aren't getting better treatment than others and all the tests are exactly the same level. So since so like every child is getting no matter what level they're at, is getting exactly the same as what every other school in the same country is having. The National College for Teaching and Leadership. So on the 1st of April 2013, the National College for School Leadership merged with the teaching agency to become the National College for Teaching. The agency has got two main aims. So again, this one works very similar along the same lines, but works for college um, standards as well. So this is exactly given exactly the same um, opportunity um, as the um, standard testing agency. So their aims um, for the standing test uh, testing agencies are ensuring that agency confirms the departmental with and governing policy, making sure that agency are having good financial management, taking responsibility for oversighting of the standards and testing agency, and to li uh, line managing the chief executive. So they're always making sure um, that 
there's always they've they've got the right financial needs as well so they never go um over what they need to spend and also that they um obviously don't get go bankrupt as well they also making sure obviously the same for making sure that they're um all the they're working alongside with the government making sure that the government is aware of what they're doing but also if the government uh, change anything obviously the standard testing agency are also aware so the aims for the National College for Teaching and Leadership aims are um, improving the quality of the workplace and helping schools to um, help each other to improve. It works with schools to develop an education system. Um, this means the teacher and the lead leadership training and continued professional development. They also look at support from school to school and uh, develop local partnerships uh, led by the best uh, head teachers. So obviously this has got, um, obviously this is working with lots of different areas compared to the, the standard testing agency. They're looking more, obviously, um, at making sure that their teachers are always highly qualified so that they can deliver the best, obviously, to their um, students. So the next uh, slide is key stage years and ages. So obviously um, in schools there's different key stage areas so it goes up to all the way up to uh, key stage four. So we'll see key stage one is three to five year olds. So this one is basically developing fundamental movement skills so balance, coordination and promoting physical exercise. So obviously um, for PE um, at this age um, most uh, children just realistically need to learn fundamental skills if these skills aren't obviously implemented at a younger age they will struggle when they get to say 11 14 so introducing them at a nice young age obviously allows them to get the most um, out of PE lessons and also when they move up on to bring it obviously into more sports based and they've got all the basic needs that they um, obviously they require so key to stage two is obviously six uh, to 11 year olds. So it's applying and develop um, a broad range of skills. So obviously looking at those fundamental skills again, but linking them into actions and sequences and movement. So obviously for instance, running and jumping in sequence. Obviously again, this is fundamental as well. This requires, um, all children should be able to do this. And again, they not only need this um, for um, just physical education, they also need it for things like basic um, health related things as well. So obviously when they get older, they need it for obviously making sure that they can um, use this if they want a healthy lifestyle. So by able to run and things like that, that is keeping the whole movement going. So key stage three, 11 to 14 year olds should build on physical development and learning in key stage one and two, getting better in technical and applying them in different sports and physical activities. So this is realistically when the main um, bits of sport is then used. So for instance, like football, hockey, netball, uh, rugby, they all use um, basic skills, which then go on to develop into, um, they need to use the basic skills and then develop them into uh, techniques as well. So having these techniques can then again allow them to use um, when they go outside um, and go for clubs, which um, out, out, out of school clubs realistically. Um, they can then obviously go on to do that 